In this video, we'll take a look at manual and auto reach topology. We'll weigh the pros and cons, as well as where and when they can be employed. We'll use the sculpt of a gorilla skull that was brought in from ZBrush to serve as our example. I'll be retopologizing it manually, as well as automatically using Quadraflow Remesh. There are better tools for retopology with more powerful algorithms like Quadramesher and ZRemesher, but this will suffice for the comparison between the manually retopologized mesh and the automatic one. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so I've gone ahead and retopologized the skull. Let's just tab into edit mode and analyze the mesh of both of these. So the one on the left hand side was retopologized manually, while the one on the right hand side was done automatically using the quadruflow remesh. So let's just zoom into the one we have on the left hand side that was done manually and take a look at the topology. So you can see that I've got some good edge flow, I've got loops that are going around my forms. I've also got a much more lighter mesh as opposed to the one on the right hand side. If you look at the one on the right hand side, it looks as if it was beaten with a waffle line. Now even though this has got quad based topology, the edge flow is not ideal. And you can also see that it's really struggling with symmetry. You can see we have odd poles that are just hanging around which is not really good when we apply that subdivision surface modifier to it. And we can also see that we've got some other errors here. Now, all this can be fixed, but this grid-based topology that we have here is not ideal. We don't have great edge flow as opposed to the one on the left-hand side here. We've got great edge flow and it's also uh, capturing a lot of the important details with a much lighter mesh. The one on the right hand side has a more denser mesh and it's failing to capture any of those crucial details that we have on the skull. So we're able to capture a lot of those details right about here and we are starting to lose all that detail when we look at the automatically retopologized mesh. We can also see that with the subdivision surface modifier, it's lost a lot of volume, especially in the area uh, with the teeth. So there are tons of errors that are occurring and with the manual one we have no such thing. We're also able to capture better detail. So we can get away with the automatically retopologized mesh in some cases but the one on the left hand side is preferred. So here's a better look before we move on. You can see that I've captured a lot of those crucial details by manually retopologizing it, whereas all of that is kind of lost in this one. It's also failing to direct my loops around the forms correctly. Let's now go over some of the pros and cons, starting with manual retopology. It is an intimate process that involves rebuilding a 3D model's mesh by hand, but by doing so, it can become tedious and time intensive. However, Investing all that extra time allows us precise control over the placement of vertices and results in better detail preservation. This method is ideal for complicated organic models, especially those intended for animation. A manually created mesh is much easier and straightforward to unwrap. It also makes it easier to rig for animation. This process yields a very flexible mesh that can be used in multiple scenarios. On the other hand, automatic retopology relies on algorithms to generate a mesh with quad-based and evenly spaced topology very quickly. Although this method is extremely fast, it does not give us the optimal edge flow that can be achieved manually, especially when dealing with highly complex organic models that are asymmetrical in nature. The process can also result in a mesh that might yield unpredictable results when subdivided, depending on the object we are dealing with. This method can sometimes end up making UV unwrapping and rigging a hassle as well. And the usability of such a mesh has limited application. Now that we have gone over some of the pros and cons of both methods, let's discuss where and when they can be employed in our process. Manual retopology, though complex, is by far the most preferred method for obvious reasons. 
The resulting mesh is of high quality and is optimized in a manner that allows it to be used in a variety of instances. In the context of VFX or animation, they are preferred in the production of hero assets as they are not only pipeline friendly but will also be close and personal with the camera. Another thing to note is that a well retopologized mesh has an inherently longer lifespan and can be utilized beyond the scope of its intended purpose. Automatic retopology is handy when dealing with objects that make up the background elements in a scene. Elements that are never going to be seen up and close can get away with substandard topology and it also makes sense as it is a more economical and efficient solution. This may also be employed in the pre-visualization stage of a project where speed is necessary over quality. Automatic retopology is especially useful for sculpting to generate better topology for posing and sculpting of higher frequency detail. In conclusion, the choice between manual and automatic retopology depends on your specific needs and preferences. Manual retopology offers more control and is often preferred, while automatic retopology can save time and effort. Alright, that brings us to the end, and if you'd like to get your hands on the models featured in this video, you can do so by heading over to my Gumroad page. Link is in the description. In a future video, I'll share my step-by-step -step process concerning manual retopology in Blender. I hope you found this video informative, and I will talk to you in the next one.